Um, I just thinking about the historical context of royals and their ailments, and I know we live now in a time of wall to wall media, but how typical is it for us to know such detail about a ruling monarch? Well, very untypical. I mean, the Queen, after all, we didn't discover and still don't know what she died of. It's just on her death certificate, it said old age. But we know that she had some form of cancer as well. And of course, her father died without us knowing anything about his illness. So I think uh, King Charles's declarations are quite unique and set a, a precedent. Mm. Do you think, Tom, that's because there would have been all sorts of speculation now? We've got social media now, 24-hour media. Or do you think this is a genuine attempt by the palace to be more open and transparent? Because you know where we then go with the next question. Do they then at some point tell us what sort of cancer he's got? Well, I think there was no alternative because, after all, he's now disappeared from public view. And so they had to give some sort of explanation, as they did for a Princess... A princess of Wales as well, uh, Kate. Uh, the truth is that when you disappear, there are questions asked. Um, I think in the end we will discover both about Kate and about Charles what he's got, uh, what they've both got. Uh, but really, it doesn't really matter. I mean, I do think they're entitled to some privacy. Mm. It really brings into focus, Tom, how light the substitutions bench is for the royal family at the moment. Um, what kind of conversations will be going on? Oh, there's Professor Angus Dalglish has joined us in vision. Wait with us. Bear with us, Angus. We will be with you in just a moment. Uh, but if we can go back uh, to Tom. Tom, I was just saying then about the fact that you realise that there aren't that many subs sat on the bench at a time like this now for the royal family. And lots of um, engagements will still have to be carried out. What sort of conversations will be going on behind the scenes? Well, we know that they've got a pretty big staff in Buckingham Palace and elsewhere in the other palaces. They won't find that much difficulty to somehow fill the slots. There, after all, there's uh, Prince William has now rejoined the, the rejoined the working royals. There are the Edinburghs. There's a few others. Princess Anne. I don't think it'll be a desperate struggle. Mm. Uh, clearly, there's also Queen Camilla. They'll pare some things down. I think more in question of the foreign trips that the king arranged both to uh, Canada and to New Zealand. Those are in question now. Yeah, and, and, and of course also, <clears throat> Tom, um, there are countries that are, we, we think possibly will be thinking time to end the monarchy. Charles might want to be thinking of going to those sort of countries. Foreign travel may now be restricted to him because of his condition and his age. Well, I think there's always been a problem. I think that uh, King Charles looked pretty unhealthy in my view already last year. Mm. Queen Camilla, we know, has got various health problems, not least of which as well is that she finds travel very tiring and mm. can't do jet lag at all. And so I think they were really cutting it down, hoping that Kate and William would take over. Uh, there is a challenge for them, not least in the Commonwealth, because they do need to sh wave the flag to show that they are the monarchs of those 14 countries as well still. Mm. There are huge challenges, not least set up by uh, Harry and Meghan, who yeah. cause endless trouble with yeah. their big mouths. And, of course, <laughs> Harry's flying back today to see his father, Tom. I, we were saying earlier in the programme, would the king be able to tell his son what sort of cancer he's got? Because he has got a bit of form, I'm afraid, for being indiscreet uh, about matters royal. Uh, and, of course, if it was to leak and the, and the finger was pointed at Harry, that would cause even more problems in their already very uh, strained indis relationship. Well, he's indiscreet, Harry. I mean, he does everything to promote himself mm. and has caused huge problems by his disloyalty and treachery and, I must say, as well, his lies. So I, I find the return of Harry at the moment uh, very suspicious. I think it's very much because uh, the king pleaded for some sort of reconciliation, but uh, because he's, he's, after it is his son, and I'm sure the king feels some guilt about the divorce with his mother, with Diana. Mm. But I wouldn't trust Harry at all. I think he's got form for, dis for disloyalty. I think his wife has got absolute form for never reconciling with her own family or friends mm. and former husband. So I think that Harry's arrival is uh, is not good news. Uh, and I think it's very much part of Harry on a self-promotion trip to give himself publicity, to give himself some sort of fame, a moment in the spotlight. Because after all, we must remember, 
that when the King's prostrate problem was announced, there was a deafening silence from California. Yeah. Uh, Harry never announced that he hoped his father would have a speedy recovery or anything like that. Mm, and so the Princess of Wales, of course. And, and, now. Yeah, and thank you, Tom. And the response to the Princess of Wales, Tom Bower there. I, I, um, I agree with what Tom said about how I'm afraid. I think he can't be trusted. And I do think this is... I look, I can't put my mind... I yeah. can't get into his head. But I think this is a lot about how this will look back in the United States. Probably. Son goes off to join his sick father. Yeah.